Hey Canucks fans, would you like the club to pursue some UFAs or is it time to let the young guys play? I'm Clayton Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take, it's Clay's Canucks commentary for Wednesday, December the 16th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. I hope you're doing well. If you're following me on Twitter, at Canuck Clay, as you should, you'll be seeing that uh, from now until Christmas, I'll be posting one Canucks Christmas Carol day. It will be a video that I've done in the past 10 years, and I'm starting with the very first one, 12 Days of Christmas. So uh, you can either look it up here on YouTube on my Christmas Canucks Christmas Carols playlist, or if you're following me on Twitter, you'll see me post uh, one video a day for the next uh, nine or 10 days or so. It's kind of a fun walk down memory lane. Get to see how skinny I was nine years ago and um, the introduction of our, our foreign exchange student, Kevin. And if you uh, watch my videos regularly, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's talk about Vancouver Canucks. Let's talk about what's going to happen after Christmas. They're still aiming for January 13th, but if so, they got to get a deal ratified in the next week or so, by the end of this week or the, the weekend for sure. Otherwise, expect it to be bumped uh, a couple weeks later, maybe to the start of February, end of January, start of February. And when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, um, there's been a lot of discussion on whether or not the Canucks should pursue more players. They can make it work. It's not easy, automatic, but there are ways to move money, including putting Bear Chi and Erickson in the minors, including um, having Michael Furlan decide not to play this season, and then you get his $3.5 million of cap space back because he goes on LTIR. So there are ways to find a few million dollars for sure if the Canucks need to, and if that's especially uh, contingent on Furlan's health. And the Athletic, they, they did an article earlier this week talking about certain Canucks issues, and one of them talked about um, the need, or at least the pursuit of two players, Travis Hamannick and Eric Halla. One of them, Hamannick being a defenseman, Halla being a forward. So um, to go back to the question I asked right at the start, I'm going to talk about this for the next few minutes, is should we pursue one or both of these players at the expense of a spot for a young uh, a young player in the lineup. Let's start with Travis Hamnick. I've always liked Hamnick's game. He is 30 years old. He was a second round draft pick way back in the day by the New York Islanders. And he's from Manitoba. So there seems to be a desire for him to play in Western Canada. He started his career with the Islanders, played really well. And then in the 2016, 2017, there were rumblings that he wasn't happy in, on Long Island and he wanted to move closer to home. So he ended up signing with the Calgary Flames or getting traded to the Calgary Flames actually for quite a haul actually, a first rounder and two second rounders in the summer of 2017. And then he played the last three seasons with Calgary, making $3.9 million a year. Right shot defenseman, um, uh, not as durable as say other guys. He, he's, he's missed some games due to injury, including one of them. Actually, I remember very vividly, first game, opening night of, of 2018, Eric Goodbranson punched Hamnick in the face in a fight and broke Hamnick's jaw in two places. No concussion, thankfully, but he broke Hamnick's jaw in two places. It was because <laughs> Gabranson ran rookie Dylan Dubé eight seconds into uh, Dubé's first shift, and then and then Hamnick uh, took exception to that. So, um, a lot of people uh, kind of explain Travis Hamnick as like Chris Tanev-like. He plays on the right side, not the most offensively gifted, but certainly uh, steady defensively, good leader, and uh, a bit injury prone. So, that's the kind of guy you're getting in Travis Hamannick. So if Calgary's still pursuing him, I don't know if you want Tanev and Hamannick on the same team. They're both obviously good players, but maybe they're, they're injury prone. Um, but Vancouver Canucks at least seem to express some initial interest. If you do that, though, if you bring Hamannick in, he's likely going to play as your third pairing uh, right side um, right shot D-man because he's not going to unseat Nate Schmidt and given contract, I don't think he's going to unseat Tyler Myers. So you, then you have a right side of Schmidt, Myers, and Hamannick. That sounds a, bit, a lot better than Schmidt, Myers, Ben or Schmidt, Myers, Chatfield or, or Rafferty. So that's the issue here is do you bring Travis Hamannick in? And if so, it would be at the expense of a Jordy Ben who can play left or right side, depending on whose partner is, and especially at the expense of one of the young guys, perhaps Jalen Chatfield or Brogan Rafferty on that right side. Obviously, there's going to be injuries. There's going to be taxi squad. There's a lot of that to figure out. And I, I guess it all has come to um, how much would you pay him? He, like I said, he made $3.9 million for the past three years. Um, is he going to go all the way from $4 million down to $1 million? That seems like a, a bit extreme, but maybe you can get him for $1.5, $1.75, at the most $2 million, because that would be half of what he was making last year. So does that make sense to you, Canucks fans? Travis Hamannick, uh trying to bring him in for under $2 million versus letting one of the young guys play or Jordy Ben play in that spot. Now let's go to the forwards. Let's go to forward Eric Halla. Now, Halla's played for four teams. He was a seventh, 
Uh, he's 29 years old, so one year younger than Hamannick. He was a seventh round pick by the Minnesota Wild back in the day. And then after playing for three or four seasons with the Wild, he actually got picked, got exposed by the Wild, got picked by the, the Vegas Golden Knights in that expansion draft. And it was one of those where Vegas worked it out where um, they promised not to pick another guy. They picked um, Hala, but the compensation was they also got Alex Tuck in a trade. So imagine Vegas uh, walking away from the expansion draft with not only Eric Hala, but with Alex Tuck as well. Obviously a really, really good good score for them. And both those guys instrumental in the, the success of the Vegas Golden Knights for season. In fact, Eric Hall had 55 points in that first season with the Vegas Golden Knights. So he played two seasons with Vegas and then he got traded to Carolina um, and then just uh, played this season with Carolina except until the trade deadline. Then he got moved to Florida uh, uh, in a big trade actually. Three or four players going from Carolina to Florida for forward Vincent Trocek. Obviously Carolina was trying to beef up for the playoffs and it didn't really help them. They didn't get that far. So Eric Holla, what are you getting him? He's a very versatile top six forward. He's a winger. Um, he, he's fast. He's got decent size and he's got a lot of skill, right? 55 points in, in a season. You can't argue with that. So he would be a perfect second line um, compliment to Bo Horvat and Tanner Pearson. Then you can keep the lot of line together and then you can move Jake Vertanen down to the third line. So would you look at bringing Eric Halla in? And for how much? Well, he made 2.875. So $2.9 million a year uh, for the past couple of years. That was his latest contract. So again, using my 50% rule, can you bring him in for $1.5 million or less? Would he sign for one? Maybe not that low, maybe 1.25 or 1.5 for a year. If you do that, then remember, then that means Jake Vertanen is not getting a spot in the top six. That means uh, maybe less minutes for a Hoglander. Um, if he makes the team for Pakosin, but he's not going to join until the end of the season. But the same, the same issue, right? There's still going to be a taxi squad. There's still going to be expanded roster. So we don't know how that's all going to shake out. But uh, it's simply, it is an upgrade, though, in, in the top six. But is it worth it for that one year, or is that money that's better spent to make an acquisition at the trade deadline, or 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 something else? So that's my question to you, Canucks fans: is looking at both those players, Travis Hamonic on D, Eric Halla up front. Do you want the Canucks to pursue either one of them? Do you want the Canucks to pursue both of them? Or would you like the Canucks to pursue neither of them and let the youngsters play? And there could be an argument to that given that this season's gonna be shortened, it's gonna be compressed, it's gonna be 50 games, 56 games, whatever it is, and maybe we're okay with the Canucks uh, um, plateauing or leveling off or even taking a small step backwards if it means saving some cap space, if it means um, letting the young players play, and then we're going to be better for it down the road. So um, that's, I, I guess, kind of the, the crust of the argument. The Canucks can find money, but is it worth them doing so um, in pursuing guys like Hamannick and Hala? Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Stay safe, stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. God bless and go Canucks go.